Dr. Tishan. This is a video about inverse functions. Let's take a look at an example and some properties. So we're going to let f of x be our inverse function, and we are going to denote the inverse of our function f as f inverse function, which is a negative 1 power, or g of x. This is, the denote, this is how we're going to denote the inverse. Some properties of functions and their inverse. If your point AB is on the function, okay, x, y, if AB is on the function, then switch the AB around. BA is going to be on the inverse. The line y equals x is a line of symmetry between functions and inverses. And to verify that you have an inverse, we do composition of functions. We show, we show that f of g of x equals x, and we show g of f of x equals x. You will see all this take place um, in this example. So let me use this example to try to show you how inverse functions work. So we're going to take this function right here. We're going to, for example, use the function 2x plus 3. It's a linear function, just the equation of a line. And we are going to find its inverse, okay? So we're going to take the function. Our function of x is 2x plus 3. We want to find the inverse. So to find the inverse, the technique you use to find an inverse function is we're going to take our f of x and we're going to rename it. We're just going to call it y. Same thing, f of x, y equals f of x. You probably heard about that when you're working in your algebra class. But f of x, y are the same thing. They're the function values, okay? And then we want to interchange the x and the y. We want to switch these variables around. We're going to call the x, y on the y, x. Interchange the variables. Change the x to y and then change the y to x, okay? Or change the y to x, change the x to y. And we have this, and now we're going to solve for our new y, all right? So subtract three from both sides, x minus three equals two times y, and then divide both sides by two, divide the left side. We don't want two times y, we just want y. So x minus three divided by two, that's what our y is, okay? So that's our new y, right? So this is the inverse of our function. We're not going to call it y equals. Looks like we have a contradiction there. So, but this is the function's inverse. You either use the g of x equals, or you can use um, f inverse. We'll use both because we're going to denote um, our g function, which we're also calling the inverse of f. All right, the inverse function we came up with is x minus three over two. So here is the inverse function. This is the inverse. All right. Note that inverse functions, the notation is a negative one power, but it's not the reciprocal, okay? Now, do you don't want to mix up the inverse with the reciprocal of a function, okay? So you have two different ways to utilize this negative one power. If you put the negative one on a number, if you take, for example, seven to the negative one power, sure, that means one over seven to the positive one. It means reciprocal here. But when you put this negative one on a function, it means inverse. It does not mean reciprocal. We don't call, look and notice, the function is 2x plus 3. The inverse is not 1 over 2x plus 3. It's not, it's not a reciprocal, it's an inverse, all right? With functions, when you're finding the inverse of a function, let me erase this over here. When you're finding the inverse of a function, what you're doing is you're just doing, undoing it, undoing the properties. Our function is 2x plus 3. We want the inverse. Well, the function, you are adding 3 and multiplying by 2, okay? All right, so we're add, multiplying x by 2, adding 3. That's what the function is doing. The inverse of the function, well, you're going to take that 3 away, aren't we? We're going to divide by 2. We're going to do the inverse of the operations. So that's what inverses are. Okay, let's look at our function right here. Okay, so let's look at our, let's list some points in our function. Our function is 2x plus 3. So let's list some points on here. Okay, so we're going to pick some x points, some y points, and let's list some points. x, f of x. Okay, so y equals f of x. So let's plug in negative 1 and 0 and 1. Let's plug in some numbers to our function. Okay, so when you plug in negative 1 for x, 2 times negative 1 plus 3 is 1. Plug in 0 for x, 2 times 0 plus 3, that's going to be 0 plus 3 is 3. Plug in 1 for x, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5. And so here's some points on our function. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in some points on the inverse of our function. Okay, so we're going to take our, I'm going to use the notation to the negative 1 power, that's my cursive f. Um, so up to the negative 1 power. So what is our inverse? It's x minus 3 over 2. So let's plug in some x, y points, x, and then our inverse of x, x we'll, we'll call it f inverse, okay? So we'll call this f inverse of x, okay? So let's just call it that. 
Now let's, for x points, just to make it line up, let's plug in 1, 3, and 5 for the x's to our inverse. Plug in 1 to the inverse, 1 minus 3, negative 2, negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. When you plug in 3 to the inverse, 3 minus 3, 0 over 2 is 0. When we plug in 5, 5 minus 3 is 2, 2 over 2 is 1. All right, so what do we notice here? On our function, we have the point negative 1, 1, we have the point 0, 3, and we have the point 1, 5. These are points on our function, okay? On our inverse, we have the points 1, negative 1, we have the point 3, 0, and we have the point 5, 1. All right, so these are points on the... So note the uh, properties, all right? So note the properties, one of the properties we have here, okay? All right, you got your function and you have the inverse of the function. So if the point AB is on the function, switch the ordered pairs around, BA is on the inverse. Notice on the function, negative one, one is on the function. So one, negative one is on the inverse. We computed it, it works, okay? Zero, three is on the function, three, zero is on the inverse. One, five is on the function, five, one is on the inverse. We computed those. So you can see this property right here. If A, B, the ordered pair A, B is on the function, then you're going to switch the A and B around um, and switch those around B, A is on the inverse. Okay. Which is why if you have a function and you have to find its inverse, you're going to take the domain, the range, you're going to take the X, Y, you're going to switch the variables because we know that works on inverses. This is why you compute it this way. All right. Now, what if we had to verify these? Let me go ahead and erase these uh, numbers here, okay? So what if we wanted to verify, all right? What if we want to verify that the uh, function in the inverse, um, <clears throat> that this truly is the inverse of the function, then we would do that composition. We would take the f function, plug it into the g, g function, plug it into the f, or plug the inverse into each other, and we would show that the composition gives us x both times. So let's do that. So to verify, all right, we want to show, we want to take our f function and we want to plug in the g function, okay, which is the inverse, and we, so we want to do this first, okay? So we're going to take the f function, I'm using cursive now, so the f function, we're going to plug g, now g is our inverse here, x minus 3 over 2. So we are going to take x minus 3 over 2 and we're going to plug it into the function. Okay, we're plugging the inverse into the function, so let's do that. Plug the inverse into the function, and we're going to end up with 2 times quantity plus 3. So when we plug the inverse into the function, put the x minus 3 over 2 in here, the 2's cancel, so you end up with what? The 2's cancel, so you have x minus 3 plus 3. Once you cancel out the 2's, now the 3's cancel, and you have x, which is what we're supposed to have. Because if we truly have a function and it's inverse, then composition is going to give us x. And it doesn't matter if you take f of g or if you take g of f. Okay, so let's do g of, I'll put my notation back to non-cursive. All right, I keep bouncing back and forth. So g of f of x. Now we're going to take the function, plug it into the inverse and see what happens. So we want to take g of the f function 2x plus 3. We are going to take the f function, plug it into the inverse, and so when we do that, what is the inverse here? x minus 3 over 2, so it's quantity 2x plus 3. All right, subtract 3 and divide that by 2. So when you do the uh, calculations here, the 3 is canceled. 3 minus 3 is gone, so you have 2x divided by 2 and divide both sides by 2, and you have x, right? So if you have your function, you find your inverse by switching the variables, to verify that a function and inverse are truly, a function and inverse is on each other, to verify, we take the composition, composition of function and inverse, composition the other way of inverse and function, and we show both ways gives us x. So um, there's a, a little bit of information. If you were to graph a function and its inverse, also the line y equals x is a line of symmetry when you're checking it graphically. So this is just a little bit about functions. These are properties of inverses of functions. Um, and this is basically how it works. This is to lead up. My next video is going to be a calculus video. We're going to find the derivatives of the inverse function. So it's important to know that if AB is on the function, then BA is on the inverse because we're going to need that property especially when we're finding um, derivatives of inverse functions. The calculus lesson will be in the next video. Okay.
where do we use inverse functions in real life? You know, because this is what we're doing in our math class. You know, it's theoretical in the math class. You're doing these problems in a math class. Where would you actually use inverse functions? So many places, right? So many applications. One of them that's probably hits home with all of us is finance. Um, finance, whether you're trying to figure out interest um, with, uh, with a mortgage or with interest when you have car loans, okay? Or if you're just figuring out your retirement. So if you take a chunk of money and put it in the bank, all right, and just for example, let's say you take $1,000, you put it in the bank, and you're going to wait five years, and you're going to earn 5% interest, okay? You can use a, an equation, okay, interest equation, compounded continuously, so the amount you're going to have is the principal times, like, e to the rate times time, and you can figure out, put that money away for this long of time, for this many years, um, at this rate, and then you can figure out how much you're going to have, all right? In five years, you compute it, and you know how much you're going to have. But what if, what if, instead of knowing how much you're putting in the bank, what if I want to have $5,000 in five years, okay? So I want, I know the amount I want to have, how much do I need to put away? Now you have to find the inverse of the equation you were, so you can actually solve for the principle that you need, how much do I need to put away so I know I have that much money later on. This is the inverses in real life. Of course, in a math class, you're doing a lot of theory, okay? So, and it's just, you know, to, to improve your capacity so you can understand the practical applications later on. So anyways, I hope this helps with inverse functions. Um, thank you, um, thank you, and take care.